As I said, we were talking before, you can feel the energy in the room. You can feel the kind of the wave of popular interest in this election rising behind you because we are only six days away from the voting in Iowa, which means this is the last week CBS will let me say caucus on the air. <laughs> Caucus. <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> and last night in Des Moines, the Democrats did something we rarely see anymore. Uh, them on a weeknight. <laughs> and it wasn't some boring debate. It was a town hall. And in front of the average working Iowans, they each made a great case why the next president of the United States should be really any one of them. I like Hillary Clinton, and I respect Hillary Clinton. I obviously respect Senator Sanders greatly. I'm honored to be able to uh, offer my candidacy in the company of Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders. Hillary Clinton is a very good person. Martin O'Malley is a very decent guy. Wow. <laughs> get a room, guys. <laughs> they are really trying to get every last vote, including each other's. And they weren't the only ones being ruthlessly nice. The audience of Iowa voters who were there to ask the tough questions did not show up. But these friendly folks did. I think you've introduced a lot of programs that could help a lot of people. Uh, my question is, realistically, how do we fund those programs? Good. I'd like to know what issue you think should be most important to young voters and why. Thank you. Great question. Madam Secretary. Uh, before I ask my question, I have a quick comment, and that is that uh, I was a lukewarm person for you before the Benghazi hearings. I watched all 11 hours, every second of it, and came away from that a gung-ho supporter of yours. Thank you. Thank you. He did eventually get to his question, which was, Secretary Clinton, why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Now, the thing... The thing about uh, town halls is that there's no conflict, and you don't really learn anything new. But I think it's great, because it's nice to see them get out from behind their podiums. It really, it really humanizes them. And I would love to find some way to make myself seem human. And uh, you, sir, uh, yeah, you're raising your hand. Do you have a question? Uh, yes, Stephen. I'm an EMT from Cedar Rapids. Thank you for your service. I was just wondering, are you also willing to take questions from your audience? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question um, from you, a true hero. Thank you. Um, uh, it's an honor to answer your question. And make no mistake, I am answering that question right now. And I want everyone here to know that I have the vision and the leadership to take further questions. Um, yes, uh, you, sir, with the, is it a beard? Is that what you have? Yes, sir, you, yes. Uh, hi, Stephen, I'm a Netflix. <laughs> yes, the hi, beard, Stephen, it's very hard to talk with a beard that fuzzy, I understand. <laughs> yes, you have, you have a question, or perhaps your I, beard has a question? I, uh, yeah, I'm a Netflix subscriber from uh, Duluth. My question is, uh, do you think Martin O'Malley was asked an unfair question last night at the town hall? And if so, do you have any jokes that you'd like to tell us about it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, that's a perfect question. That's a perfect question, and uh, I love you. And right now, I want to crawl inside your beard and live in it like a trembling little bird. I do remember the unfair question that uh, was asked by Chris Cuomo of Martin O'Malley. Jim, let's take a look at that. As you know, there is a 15% rule in a lot of these caucuses. So if you don't have 15% of the caucuses in that room, those men and women have to go to a different candidate. So if you don't have that, and your followers now have to go to somewhere else, the people who support you. What is your suggestion to them? This... Uh, I think that question is way out of line. Chris Cuomo, why not just ask Martin O'Malley, after you die, can I have your 10-speed bike? Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. Would you mind mouthing the words thank you as you sit down? Great. <laughs> Next question, yes, you, ma'am. You, ma'am, right over there, yes. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, I'm a part-time CEO, full-time mom, currently serving in Afghanistan. Thank you for your service. What's your question? 
Do you have a clip of Hillary Clinton that you'd like an audience member to help you set up? That is the greatest question ever asked. <laughs> if I was making a clone army of philosophers, I would use you as my baseline DNA. <laughs> now, this Hillary clip, we've all seen Bernie Sanders' inspirational America ad, haven't we? Well, last night, CNN made sure Hillary Clinton saw it, too. Here's the okay. senator's ad. <laughs> I think that's great. <laughs> I think that's fabulous. I loved it. That is tough. That is tough. Forcing her to smile through her opponent's ad, but, but I think they really went too far when they made her watch the entire Benghazi movie. Put over for inspection. Sorry, sir, I can't do that. You have a U.S. ambassador at risk. But we are the only help they have. I think that's great. I think that's fabulous. I loved it. That, that is the best review a Michael Bay film has ever received. Yes, yes, the young lady with the bangs right there. Yeah. Hello, Stephen. Hello. I'm a professional audience plant from Des Moines. Okay. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I do have a question. Okay. Uh, I brought my own footage. Jimmy, can you roll that? Okay, here's Martin O'Malley taking off his jacket rolling up his sleeves, loosening his tie. Why would he do that? Here's what happens. Sometimes uh, public figures will just spontaneously go casual. All right? They make themselves... It makes them seem more relatable or hardworking. Sometimes they'll even, they'll even roll up a sleeve like this or maybe put their foot up in a position that no one would normally stand in. And then... Just roll up your sleeves. This is... It lets... It lets the audience know... Lets the audience know that they're just ordinary folk ready to get to work who have not skipped leg day. <laughs> then maybe they'll just take a beer and... Crack it open and mmm. That is domestic. <laughs> mm. Yes, sir, right there. You look like you have a question. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't watch last night's town hall. Uh, so, do you have anything to say about that dog that ran a marathon? Yes, that's uh, that's an issue that's affecting a lot of people's Facebook feeds this morning. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Uh, it's a true story. In Alabama, a bloodhound named Ludivine went out on a pee break, but it got out of the yard and ran a half marathon and finished seventh. <laughs> it's a true story. And it's a story of hope. It's a story that reminds me of the time I tried to go to the gym and made a mistake and ended up winning best in breed at the Westminster Dog Show. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we have time for one last question. The tall African-American gentleman in the back of the room. Mr. Colbert, I'm an actor from Hollywood, California. Thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I was just wondering, uh, my question is, what do you have planned for the rest of the show tonight? That's an incredible question. <laughs> You're an amazing person. I will tell you what I intend to do. I intend to be right back with Lawrence Fishburne. Stick around, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>